G'day, I'm Paul. So recently we drove the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and I remember commenting on how that was a big departure from all of Hyundai's other cars. And this is Kia's version of that and it is a huge departure for Kia from the rest of the Kia range. It's called the EV6. Pricing for this is still yet to be confirmed for Australia, but we do know that it's going to arrive in early 2022. And today we're checking out this pre-production car. This is gonna compete with things like the Tesla Model Y, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Volvo XC40 Recharge. There's a whole stack of competitors in this segment and we think it'll probably be priced around the same as the Ioniq 5, around that $70,000 mark. So today we're gonna to do a detailed walk around of this car. If you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes up on the screen there or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That's gonna tell you every single time we check out Mac Road Cars. Let's talk exterior design. So for the Australian market, you're gonna have seven external colors to pick from, including this matte gray. Globally, there's 11 colors available. Now, matte gray, you might be looking at this and going, oh my God, this is so hard to keep clean. Uh, my Supra was finished in this same color. It was actually pretty easy to keep clean. You just don't use any abrasive stuff on it and, um, you know, just clean it regularly and it'll be fine. Um, now, in terms of the design, I'm gonna jump down the front here. So new Kia logo up the top there, and it looks really cool here offset with the matte gray. It just gives it uh, a bit of a polished uh, sort of finish. And it kind of looks like this has just been cut straight out of this sort of solid bit of metal. It's got the cut lines on it, and I just think it looks fantastic. Down the front here, you've got a camera. All of this is blocked off. So I have mentioned in other EV reviews before that uh, they don't predominantly need as much cooling at this top end. It's mainly down here, but they look kind of weird if you don't have a grill, like your Tesla Model 3s just have that sort of flat nose on them. So that's why all of this stuff's covered up. Beautiful sort of texture on there as well. Down the bottom here is where you have that radar sensor as well, and then more parking sensors. Over with the headlights, you have a full LED headlight package here with LED daytime running lights and indicators. And then down the bottom there, you've got some faux vents just off to the side. We'll hop around to the side here and have a look at these wheels. So 20 inch alloy wheels. This is the GT line. There is actually a full fat GT model coming, which will be uh, even faster still, they're talking about the 0 to 100 time in the three second range. So that is still yet to come, but you can kind of see where they're heading with this. It is really gonna have those performance overtones. And, and I think that this wheel design looks really cool. It goes one step further with the full fat GT. And I think that um, that thing is going to be a lot of fun to drive. As we move down the car here, you've got LED indicators built into that wing mirror, bit of piano black on the side there, and also on this, uh, on this pillar that leads to the roof. You've got a camera in the side there for the 360 camera and more piano black trim down the bottom of the car. Now, door handles, they're similar to Tesla in the sense that you push them out like that and then to open the door, you give that a pull and then close it like that. You've got a little tab on there to lock the car as well. So you just put your finger on that and then the car locks. So intuitive setup, uh, not quite the Tesla setup though where you don't need the key. You still have to carry the key around with you to get in and out of the car, which I think is a bit counterintuitive. I think we're, we're done with keys now. You've got these piano black pillars down the side. And then as you move to the back of the car, have a look under here, you have these puddle lights that are attached to the spoiler element. So that gives you projection down onto the ground, which is, which is really cool. On the opposite side, you have a charging port. I'll run you through that in a second, but come around to the rear. Up the top there, you've got a shark fin aerial and have a look at this aero element here. So because there is no rear wiper under there, they basically redirect air down the back of the car here. It then pushes any sort of stagnant uh, water drops off the back of your window. So in theory, you don't ever need a wiper to keep it all clean. Huge strip of LED along the back here, and that runs all the way down the sides of the car with the indicator built into this section. I love also that this is all 3D textured here and then it lights up as soon as you put the indicator on. So really cool setup. And then down the bottom there, more piano black with that big key logo and EV6. Now let's have a quick chat about the dimensions. I wanna put the size of this into perspective for you. It's just under 4.7 meters long, which makes it slightly longer than an Ionic 5. It is 1880 mil wide. It's 1550 tall, and that is slightly shorter than an Ionic 5. And then in terms of the wheelbase, it's on a 2900 millimeter wheelbase. So 100 mil shorter than an Ionic 5, but the same size as a Palisade. So it should be nice and roomy inside there in terms of the space. Now, let me know in the comments section below, what do you think of the design? Are you as impressed as I am? Let me know down there. Now let's quickly talk about charging. So it all happens behind here. Now this is a pre-production car, so I've got to push a little harder than you would on an actual production car. You've got your charge state just here. 
You have both AC and DC charging. AC charging works at up to three phase 11 kilowatts. DC charging will work up to 233 kilowatt peak. So it is a proper MIDI setup. It does both 400 and 800 volts. This moves depending on how much charge is coming into the car. The exciting thing with this in the Ionic 5 is that you can actually do V2O, which is vehicle to load. So you plug into there and you're able to take out 3.6 kilowatts of energy from the car through a 15 amp plug and run you know, whatever you need to run. There's also an equivalent port inside the car that I'll show you later on. But in terms of charging, this really is at the peak of charging capacity for a passenger car, which is really cool. In terms of the electric motors and the battery, Globally, you do have both 58 kilowatt hour and a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. But for Australia, we're only getting the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. That means the two wheel drive will feature 168 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. That's good for a zero to 100 in 7.3 seconds. While the all wheel drive, which is what you'll get in the GT line and also non GT line models, will feature a 239 kilowatt set of motors, one on the rear axle, one on the front, that will produce 605 newton meters of torque and we'll do 0 to 100 in around 5.2 seconds. But the thing that has me most excited is the full fat GT model. Same size battery but it produces 430 kilowatts of power and 740 newton meters of torque and that will do 0 to 100 in about three and a half seconds. And in terms of range you can go from around that 350 kilometer mark all the way to a little over 400 kilometers of range so there is a fair bit there to take in. Just keep in mind though that the specs for Australia are still to be confirmed so we'll have a little bit more on that when the car is ready for launch. Righto, so we are inside the EV6. We'll start off with the key. So it looks like a regular Kia key. You've got the ability to move the car forwards and backwards from outside. You have a remote start function, new Kia logo down the bottom there. You've got lock, unlock, boot, and then on the back it is blank. Proximity sensing key, so leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside the car, you have an EV start button here. I know I've spoken in the Ionic 5 review about how silly it is to just write EV there because obviously we're in an EV, but... Anyway, um, in terms of the design, I think this looks sensational. So it's not quite as out there as the Ionic 5, but I think that's a good thing. That may not appeal to everyone. I love the fact that they've got these two big screens here ahead of the driver. They've used recycled materials along the dashboard there. And this is gonna look familiar if you've seen our Sportage review, because it allows you to switch between these two systems here, which is your shortcut buttons for the infotainment plus the climate control. This whole center stack looks great as well. You've got LED lights you can configure around the cabin here, and it's just a very smart design that, um, that I think just really suits the look and character of this car. In terms of the materials, so that's all that recycled material. The carpets are recycled as well. All of this stuff is pretty nice. This is a pre-production car, so I'm probably going to just reserve judgment. We won't do a, our hardness test on this just yet because there's no point. But in terms of your touch points, that is kind of firm there and then softer on the door. But I suspect this will be softer when we do get our full production cars. Now, let's talk infotainment. Now, some of these specs aren't yet confirmed firm for Australia, but I'll run you through what we see here in front of us. So two 12.3 inch displays. This is really similar to the infotainment system we've seen in the Ionic 5 and also the new Sportage. So here in EV specific vehicles, you can see you get an EV display there with a pretty generic looking vehicle. I suspect the production car is going to look a little different to that. But then when you swipe across, you have access to the rest of your functions. So the EV menu gives you all of the car's EV details. So battery capacity, range, and also the ability to schedule charging and also do your vehicle to load setup through here. In addition to that, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio. We don't know how many speakers it is, but Kia is now working with Meridian. So there's a Meridian branded sound system, similar to what you find in Jaguar Land Rover products. And normally they're pretty good. So pretty excited for that. Uh, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wired. So you don't have a wireless setup, which I think is pretty disappointing in this day and age. But anyway, I'm sure they will get to it eventually. And then some of my favorite functions like quiet mode. So the kids don't hear your radio in the back there. Voice memo if you come up with any great ideas out on the road and then uh, internal satellite navigation as well but because this car is pre-production it says we're in Germany somewhere <laughs> and we're actually not so um, yeah that is that infotainment system ahead of the driver you have another 12.3 inch display this is pretty straightforward but you can move through the menus here in the center so that gives you your safety details and also compass drive modes. Unique to both the Ionic 5 and, and this is going to be that the EV6 will actually have a head-up display in Australia or the ability to option it. And it gives you 
augmented reality projected up on the screen. We've seen this in Mercedes-Benz products in this center screen here, but I haven't seen it before on head-up display, and I think that is going to be some seriously cool technology when this finally does land in Australia. Now, moving on to safety technology, you have both front and rear AEB that detects pedestrians and cyclists. You have a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. Blind spot monitoring, so you have that built into the wing mirror, but you can also activate the indicator and that will activate the blind spot monitors here ahead of the driver. And I think this feature is sensational. I really love Hyundai and Kia products that have that technology because it is just a good backup in case you miss the flashing light on your blind spot monitor. And then you've also got rear cross traffic alert, radar cruise control. And then when it comes to parking, you have both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So the quality is actually pretty good. So that's looking out the back of the camera. That's your 360 view. Then what you can also do is get tighter angles. So that's like a trailer parking view, kind of redundant. You can see it's really hard to see what's going on there. Uh, then you've also got a side view for the wheels. And then finally, you've got a wide angle at the back there, plus a 3D mode. So it gives you your EV6 there, and then you can scroll around and, and see what's going on around you. So yeah, not a bad setup. Now. Super quickly, um, Kia and Hyundai have a stack of EVs coming. Would you, I guess, venture into the EV market because it's Kia and Hyundai as opposed to other brands because they'll be cost effective, Kia seven year warranty here in Australia. Um, yeah, are you excited by Korean EVs above and beyond other brands? Let me know what you reckon in the comment section below. Moving on to practicality, and we'll start with your connectivity. So down the front here, you've got a USB-C port, a USB-A port, another USB-C hidden under here, a 12 volt outlet. Then up the top, you have wireless phone charging. And in terms of your storage for your phone, so it can live on the wireless charging pad down there, or you can pop it here in the cup holders or even that slot just there. So plenty of storage options for your phone. In terms of further storage, you've got two cup holders. You've also got cup holders inside the doors. Heaps of storage down here. Uh, it's not like the Ionic 5, which has like big gaps down the bottom here. And they're kind of useless, those things, because if you do put a bag down there, it'll just roll into your foot space over here. Um, center console is quite deep, so plenty of storage space there. And again, unlike the Ionic 5, it's not like a, a bucket type thing. It just goes all the way in for your glove box. So plenty of storage space in there as well. Now let's talk comfort. You've got dual zone automatic climate control. Like I said before, one push of this activates that. You've got heated and cooled seats for the front row here, heated steering wheel. And then in terms of your seats, loving this design. So there's like an Alcantara finish in the center there with this offset color. Love this sort of contouring on that headrest as well. It really is quite a creative setup. In terms of the seat adjustment, both full electric seat adjustment. You also have uh, the ability to store your memory up the front here as well. But like the Ionic 5, this has the zero gravity seats, which means a couple of pushes of buttons here means you can go into the full recline mode. So while the car is charging, you can kick back and relax maybe stack some Zs or something like that. And then once it's charged, you just get straight back into action. So uh, yeah, really cool and novel setup. And I like the way they've been able to do this without uh, integrating that sort of footrest down the bottom. Steering has both tilt and reach adjustment. And then finally our reach test. All of this stuff is easy to reach, but I do find the outer edges of that screen just a little bit of a stretch from the driver's seat. So second row, let's start off with room. Look at this, have stacks of knee room there. Toe room is surprisingly not very good. My toes are kind of just wedged there. I would have liked to be able to stretch out a little bit here while in the second row, but headroom is not too bad. This doesn't get that full glass roof that you get in the Ionic 5. So it's just that sort of front sunroof set up there. I'm not sure if a panoramic roof is going to be available as an option, but um, yeah, it's just one of those cool things that kids love. Uh, you've got map pockets in the back of the seats here. You've got air vents in the B pillar, nothing down here. And that's because your USB ports are built into the seats here. So two USB-C ports. You've got a center armrest here with two cup holders, but have a look at this. You can swipe them out of the way. And I think that is such a good feature because sometimes you don't want your cup holders. You can just move them out of the way and have that uh, set up. So same design for the seats here with that Alcantara stuff and the offset colors. I so fixed points on the two outboard seats. And then you can also move these seats if you do want to recline a little bit. Now down here as well, you don't have to just use your charge port for vehicle to load. You've actually got a power point down here. So this is the type of stuff that makes electric cars so versatile. And I think people are going to love it. Now, let's talk cargo space. So similar to the Ionic 5, you've got a power tailgate. 
And then depending on whether you go for uh, the premium sound system or not, you've got a little over 500 litres of cargo space available here with a subfloor. So beneath here, you've got room to store some of your cables, the V2L plug, for example, and you can also tuck away that cargo blind. And then if you don't go the premium sound system, you have a little bit more depth. Up the front there, you have a little bit of storage as well. Again, depending on whether you go rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, it varies in size, but in all wheel drive trim, it's kind of a tiny little space around 30 litres. What you can do though is drop that second row and then it gives you a pretty flat loading floor making this I think perhaps a little more practical than the Ionic 5. So the Kia EV6, um, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is that unlike the Ionic 5, which I didn't really love the way that it rode on country roads, I thought it was uh, just really unsettled, didn't have good body control. All of the ride and handling tuning for the EV6 has been done here in Australia. So during COVID, they were hard at work giving this an Australian tune and that will generally mean it will be a great car to drive. So I can't wait to get behind the wheel of this. I'm really keen for your feedback. Let me know in the comments section below. They've had something like 16,000 expressions of interest in Australia, but they only have about 500 coming in 2022. So it's gonna be slim pickings for a lot of people, but let me know what you reckon about it down there. Are you on the waiting list for one? Let me know the color and spec that you're going for. I think I'm gonna hang out for the GT. This should be an absolute weapon when they start sticking those uh, fast motors inside it. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. But until next time, take it easy.